Hello parents and guardians, my name is Mr. Wong and welcome to one of my period 4 Google Classrooms for Science. This particular period I actually have multiple class sections running simultaneously, namely Basic Biology A and Basic Chemistry A. What you're looking at here is the opening screen to my Google Classroom for Chemistry. This particular view shows everything that I've already posted under my Stream tab, like announcements to the students and past assignments. To get to the daily assignments, as well as the online meeting links for the day, students should log into their student Gmail accounts before the class period starts to access their Google Classrooms. Once they've done that and gotten to this screen, or something similar to it because the student view may be a little different than the teacher view, students need to click on the Classwork tab here, like this, which will take them to the respective class section. Then they need to find the daily assignment that they're looking for by the date and click on it to view the assignment and online meeting link. So if we were looking for the assignment for August 24th, we'd go down here to August 24th, click on it, and the window expands to show the actual assignment right there. Underneath that is the online meeting link for this particular class session. And online meeting links are included in all assignments. To join the online meeting, students just need to log into the Google Classroom and then click on this link and that will take them directly to the online meeting that I will be hosting. Underneath that are instructions on how to download uh, attachments that I may have attached for this assignment. And then underneath that are several attachments that I've attached to this assignment. I've attached textbook pages, textbook pages, as well as something called a Cornell Notes template. So I'm going to go ahead and open up each and every one of these to show you what they look like. So once again, let me briefly go over the assignment. The assignment is page 27, read and summarize chapter 21 summary in a paragraph or more, as well as page 31 to 34, what are some properties of matter, some vocabulary, and then answering questions 1 through 5 on page 31 to 34. So if we click on page 27 to 29, we're going to get a view only window of this uh, textbook page. And students can use this, um, but I would prefer, and I often direct the students to go to these three dots in the upper right hand corner, click on them, and then click open in a new window. Because that will open up that document or those textbook pages into a different window. And then that will allow them to go back to the Google Classroom and click on this arrow to see the assignment so they know what they need to work on. Now I'm going to go ahead and open up another document. And as you can see, these are the textbook pages. And again, go to the three dots in the upper right hand corner, click on them, and click and open in a new window. And boom, there are the textbook pages. Now the nice thing about opening up uh, the attachment in another window is it gives the students access to additional functions that maybe they didn't have in the previous window. Um, they can print the document. I think they were able to do that in the last window. But from here they can also download this document onto their computer so that they can hang on to it if they wanted to. They could also click on Open With and then open this document using some of these other applications. Um, I'm going to show you what you can do with Google Docs. On, on the template that I've downloaded, or uploaded, I should say, for this particular assignment. And oftentimes when we're running class, um, we will read these selections with the student. Uh, if the student wants to work independently and read them on, their, on his or her own, that's fine too. Um, when we get to the comprehension questions, again, we will work with the students on, on helping them to uh, solve these problems. But if they also want to work on their own, that's fine too. So let me go back to the assignment. And I want to take a look at this, or I want to show you this, this Cornell Notes template. So this is something that I created to help the students uh, analyze the vocabulary. But if we open it in its own window, and then click on Open With, and this Open With uh, option was available in the previous window. See? But for some reason, sometimes it works a little bit better if um, 
if we utilize it from its own window. So I'm going to go and open up this, this Word document as a Google Doc. And now this is an editable document that the student can type on. So rather than uh, create their own document to type up their assignment and submit to me, they now have the option to type here or type anywhere on this document and then submit this back to me um, electronically. Now students also have the option to uh, do their assignments with paper and pencil if, they, if, that's, if they're more comfortable with that. But once they've completed their assignment on paper and pencil, they're going to have to take a picture of it and upload those pictures either into their student Gmail account or into Google Classroom and send it to me in that way. Either way is fine with me. But anyway, another way that the students can, can view the assignment is to go down here where it says View Assignment. If they click on this, this whole assignment will be expanded into a much larger window. Um, I can't actually click on it for chemistry because the next window contains student names and, and that's confidential. But I'll show you what I mean by going to my uh, Google Classroom for Biology uh, because this particular class hasn't been populated with students yet. So I'm going to do the same thing. Again, this is my biology class. I'm going to go to Classwork, click on Classwork. I'm just going to randomly select this assignment right here. It opens up a little bit. But at the very bottom, I'm going to click on View Assignment and we're going to see what it looks like. Now on my end, if there were students populating this class, there'd be a roster of students here. And then over here it would tell me which students have turned in their work electronically, as well as which students have not. But if we go to Instructions and click on that, well, here's the whole assignment right there, as well as the meeting link for the day, instructions for how to download materials, and the attachments uh, for the daily lesson. From here, students can also um, send me messages by typing class comments and sending them to me. Although if they do it here, it's, I, don't, I don't believe it's, uh, the default setting is public, so other students can see those questions. But they do have the option to um, click on and send me private messages as well. And they could also email me. So that's what it looks like when you click on View Assignment. So let's go back to Chemistry. So let's see here. Um, I've already invited the students to join my Google Classrooms and they have already accepted. Um, so if you're receiving or if you're viewing this, uh, very, it's very likely that your child has already uh, been accepted to my Google Classroom. I sent out those invitations the week before school started and to date all the students that I've sent them out to have accepted the invitation. But let's say for some reason um, your child is having difficulty accessing the Google Classroom because maybe um, you've went out of town or, or they're using an unfamiliar computer and or they just don't remember how to get in. One way that they can access my, my Google Classroom links is to go to the school website. So I'm going to go to the school website, which looks like so. I'm going to go to staff, and then under staff I'm going to click on full staff directory. Here's the staff directory. I'm going to be at the very bottom since my last name starts with W, but I could also type in my name here, and that's a shortcut. If I click on my name, that'll take us to another window that'll show you my Google Classrooms. Before I do that, I also wanted to show you that here's a way for uh, students, parents, and guardians to email me in case they forget my email address. Just clicking on that will, will um, take you to a window that uh, allows you to email me directly. But let's click on my name. Let's click on my name again. And here's my website page. I talk a little bit about the Google Classroom here and here, but underneath here, the, here are the links to all of my Google Classrooms. So as long as a student has already logged into their student Gmail account before they click on these links, they can get they can be directed uh, uh, straight to my Google Classrooms. If they haven't logged into their student Gmail accounts and they click on any of these links, they will be automatically directed to log into their student Gmail accounts first. So that's another way that students can get to my student Gmail accounts um, if they need to. Okay, let's uh, discussing some general business for the class. All students are required to log in by the start of the period, if not a little sooner. When students join the online meeting, they will be directed to a communal virtual waiting room where I take role, 
make general announcements and go over each section's assignment for the day. Once I've done those things, students will be assigned to virtual breakout rooms based on the section that they are enrolled in. So for instance, the biology students will go to their breakout room and the chemistry students will go to their own breakout room. Um, students that log into the meetings late will, will be directed to a virtual waiting room until assigned to a breakout room by me. And I do get an alert when a student logs in late to, to let me know that a student has logged in late and needs to be assigned to a breakout room. So they won't be sitting there long. To assure that the students receive support while in the breakout room, each breakout room will be supervised by an adult instructional assistant or myself. As the classroom teacher, I do periodically migrate from breakout room to breakout room to check in on the group, uh, the students and the staff, and see if, they're, if they need any assistance or, or if there's any questions that uh, they need me to answer. Uh, students do have the ability to contact me directly when I'm in a different breakout room than they are. At the bottom of their screen, there's a, um, a Ask for Help button, and if they click on it, it automatically notifies me no matter where I am in, in um, the online meeting that a student in such and such breakout room needs my assistance, and then I can go there directly to uh, work with that student. Each of these courses is worth five credits and satisfies either the life science graduation requirement or the physical science graduation requirement. And if those requirements have already been satisfied by the student, then the class would also satisfy the elective graduation requirement. And again, a link to this Google Classroom can be found under my name in the West Ranch High School staff directory. As part of the basic course curriculum, time is built into each class to provide students with additional support, remediation, or both. Supports include, but are not limited to, coordination and collaboration with related service providers like designated instructional service counselors, educational related intensive counseling service therapists, language and speech pathologists, occupational therapists, and other related service providers. Students are expected to log into the Google Classroom as scheduled by the start of the period, if not a little sooner. Once logged into the Google Classroom, students may access the online meeting link posted in the daily assignment and currently I am using the Zoom platform. Attendance will be taken daily and students that are tardy or absent will be marked accordingly. Students are expected to engage in, complete, and submit their assignments electronically while on distance learning. I make it a habit of notifying students within one school day when I receive their assignments. So if they don't hear from me, I probably did not get their assignment. And there will be opportunities for both synchronous and asynchronous learning activities. Late assignments will be accepted, and students will be expected to make up assignments that they missed, but all late assignments must be turned in at least one week prior to the grade reporting deadlines in order to account for those grading periods. Assignments will be graded on a 100-point scale, which means that whatever a student's accuracy percentage is on an assignment, that will be their score. So if a student gets 100% on assignment, that means they earned 100 out of 100 points on that assignment. If a student gets a 78% on an assignment, that means they got 78 out of 100 on that particular assignment. At a minimum, grades will be updated weekly on Infinite Campus, uh, but it's very likely that I'll update them daily instead. Students will be con expected to conduct themselves appropriately while on distance learning and follow all school rules, just as they would be if they were attending campus. And I know that I went over a lot of material in a short amount of time, so if you happen to have any questions or concerns, you can email me at my Heart District email, which is as follows. pwong at heartdistrict.org or pwong at h-a-r-t-d-i-s-t-r-i-c-t dot o-r-g. Well, that takes us to the end of our video. And, well, I was going to say unless you have any other questions, but you're not actually there. So anyway... Thank you and have a great rest of your day.